out a nice problem concerning the Gauss bonnet law. So, we're going to take the first octant of a unit sphere, look something like this. And we're going to call this curve gamma, right? So now, gamma is just composed of these three uh, quarter circle arcs. So what we're going to do is calculate the integral of the Gaussian curvature over this surface plus the integral of plus the integral of the geodesic curvature over the curve plus the sum of all the exterior angles. First of all, what does exterior angle mean? Well, the tangent vector at these points of discontinuity rapidly changes. Not just rapidly, there's a whole discontinuity. So, this is just quantifying the discontinuity between the three junction points here, here, and here. And you can probably already envision that all of these are 90 degrees, but we have to actually rigorously prove that first. So, first, let's parametrize this boundary. So, this can be written as the union of three parametric curves. So for the first one, we'll choose the one in the plane x is equal to zero, which is this one, and that's going to be what? Zero, comma, this is going to be, wait a second, is that x equal? No, that's y equals zero. This is x equals zero. You'll just have y on this axis and z on this axis, which means that the other two will look something like sine theta, cosine theta. And remember, we're talking about the unit sphere, so no radius factor to add. Then you have the second parametric curve, which is going to be on y equals 0, and it's going to act in a very similar way. And the third one's going to act in a similar way. So now, I mean, if we're parametrizing with respect to arc length, we don't really have to change anything because the arc length of every single one of these curves is going to be 1 at all times. So this is what happens if we parametrize it with respect to arc length. Now, what do we have to do? Well, first we have to find the Gaussian curvature over this surface, but oh wait, the Gaussian curvature of a sphere is just 1 over r squared. That doesn't change if you slice it up into pieces, because Gaussian curvature is a local property, and the radius of this sphere is 1, which makes the Gaussian curvature just 1. And the integral of 1 dA is just the area, A. Now, what is the area of this? Well, it's 1 eighth octant of the total surface area of a sphere, 4 pi r squared, which is equal to half pi r squared. But wait, r is just 1, so it becomes half pi. Then you have this. What is this? Well, it can be written like this. And this looks confusing, but essentially, it's the projection of the tangent vector at a point onto the tangent plane at a point or the norm of the projection of the tangent vector at a point onto the tangent plane at that point. Okay, good. Okay, so now, first, let's find these exterior angles. So what are those? Well, the tangent vector to this at a point s is 0 cosine s minus sine s. Now, 
you'll find that, well, Hey, no, I don't think you can say that, right? Because, okay, oh, I see. So, technically, this isn't even dependent on arc length because arc length is the same even as you change t to time. Okay, that's fine. So, you have these three curves, and you'll find what? You have zero cosine t minus sine t. What is t at this point, right here? Well, you start from here. By the time you reach here, t has to be, t has to be pi over 2. So, zero cosine pi over 2 is zero, and minus sine pi over 2 is minus 1. So you have minus k. Meanwhile, the z equals 0 curve can't, has a tangent vector of cosine t minus sine t 0, which becomes 0 minus 1 0 at that point, which is minus j. And, of course, these two are perpendicular. So that's 1 being pi over 2. Then, well, you have to repeat the same process with the other two handles. But it's pretty apparent that they're all pi over 2. So you get half pi plus 3 pi over 2. The only thing left is the geodesic curvature. And to calculate that, you just need to know the curvature. And the curvature of something like these quarter circles is always the same. It's just 1 over r, but in this case, r is always 1. So, well, actually, that's just the norm of the curvature, not the actual curvature vector. So, I need to remember the form, formula for curvature. Check. Okay, so remembering this formula that definitely didn't leave my head, now how do you calculate that? Well, in this case, you have, for example, this is our prime of t. And you have to cross that with r double prime of t, which is what? Well, you take the derivative of this again, you get 0 minus sine t minus cosine t. And you divide that by the norm of the first one cubed, which is just 1. So you erase that. So that means the curvature is just this in all situations. So then, what is this? Well, in this case, you have zero cosine t minus sine t, zero minus sine t minus cosine t. You get minus cosine squared t. I the other way gives minus sine squared t. Oh, sorry, plus sine squared t, since this is positive negative, this is negative negative. This is zero, this backwards is also zero. This is zero, this backwards is also zero. So, the curvature vector always points in the x direction with varying magnitude. So, 
well, that's just for this curve. Now you also need to find it for the other curves as well. So let's put this here. And let's put the formula that we have to use over here. Okay, so for this first curve, and this is the unit normal at a point. Now, the unit normal in this case is what? Well, it's the cross product of the tangent vector and the, uh, the tangent vector in one direction and the tangent vector in another direction. Like, for instance, the cross product between these two, or the cross product between these two, or the cross product between these two. So, what's the normal vector for a unit sphere? Well, it's just radially pointing outward. It's just the normalized version. Of is it sine squared? Let me describe it. Well, it could be two coordinates, and then I could just write the default to. I guess I have to default to sine theta. Cosine phi, sine theta, sine phi, cosine theta. Or maybe I'm not going to do that. So, this is kind of how you have to approach it for uh, but the normalized. So would it be something like the normalized version of this? Well, that would just be can't combine them. Something parametric. Unit normal vector point. Oh wait, we're just looking for the unit normal vector along this curve. Oh. Oh. The unit normal vector along a curve is much easier to find, right? Well, the unit normal vector along this curve well, you just have to take you can't take a cross product. Oh, right. So, you have to take something like if you take the cross product of z and the tangent vector of something in the xy plane, that'll rotate it 90 degrees, and you essentially execute the same effect here. So, for example, in the plane where in the plane where x is equal to zero, you just want a cross product with the x unit vector, and you'll get the unit normal. In the plane where z is equal to zero, you want a cross product with the z normal vector, and uh, you want a cross product with the z unit vector, and you'll get the normal vector along that curve, and so on and so forth. So, for instance, you get i, j, k, 1, 0, 0, and then what? The tangent vector of this is 0 cosine t minus sine t. So you get this is 0, this is also 0, this is cosine t, and j is negative sine t, and everything else is 0. So that's one of your normal vectors. Okay, great. So after all of that, that enables me to, we now have a curvature vector and a unit normal vector for one of our three curves, which enables me to calculate this, 
as sine squared t minus cosine squared t zero zero minus what's k dot n well it appears to be zero so it's just the norm of this which is sine squared t minus cosine squared t and you'll notice that this is because the tangent vector lies inside the tangent plane at all of these points. So really, you only have to find the curvature of these things. You don't even need the normal vector. So forget about that. Let's just find the curvature. So the curvature is, once again, for this special case, gamma prime cross gamma double prime. So what happens here? Well, you get i, j, k, cosine t, zero minus sine t, um, minus sine t, zero minus cosine t. This becomes zero. Second component becomes sine squared t. Third component becomes zero. First component becomes zero. Second component actually becomes minus cosine squared t. Third component becomes zero. Okay, so there's the second curvature vector. And finally, the last curvature vector, well, I think you can expect it's going to be zero, zero, sine squared t minus cosine squared t. So adding all three of these up, you get that the geodesic curvature is sine squared t minus cosine squared t times 1, 1, 1. So now, how do you integrate that? Well, you just do. I, I'm supposed to take the norm. Not sure why I got 1, 1, 1. When you take the norm of this, you get the square root of 3 over 3, right? Dumb. Yeah, I'm dumb. Should be the square root of 3. So, when you take the integral of that, you get the square root of 3 times the integral of sine squared t minus cosine squared t dt. Well, you get... 1 minus 2 cosine squared t dt, and from there, I uh, think I'm going to borrow this. You know what, I'll just leave it here because I don't want to do undo. Thanks everyone for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.